on this 10th Sunday after the Pentecost. As we begin our worship service this morning, would you bow with me in prayer? Gracious Lord, we are so appreciative to be here this morning. We are so grateful for your love and for your care and for the concern that you have for us in our lives. And so, Lord, this day, let us remember that this is a gift that you have given to us, a day like no other, a day that will never come again. So let us make the most of it as we rejoice and be glad in what you have created. And as we worship here this morning, may we feel the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit as you speak to our hearts and touch our lives. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you join me as together we affirm our faith using the Apostles' Creed you'll find in your bulletin. Let us say what we believe. I believe, believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, Christ His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Then he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. of our church family who are not able to be with us, those who are at home or in nursing centers or hospitals, wherever they may be, I want you to lift them up this morning in prayer. Because they are not with us physically doesn't mean that they are not with us and we are not with them in a spiritual sense. So we just lift all those folks up today also. So take a few moments of silent prayer and as you are grateful for your blessings, also bring those things to God that lay on your heart. Let us pray. God, it is through your great love and grace that we have the things that we have and we are able to do the things that we do. We know sometimes that we grumble and complain about the aches and the pains and some of the things that we deal with in life, but Lord, help us to, as we lift those things to you, look past those and pray for those who are suffering worse than we. There are many, Lord, who are, are suffering in great, in physically, physically and spiritually and, and emotionally, and Lord, we just lift them up to you today as I lift up each one who is here today. It's a joy, Lord, to be in your presence, whether it be 4,000 miles from here or in this place. It's a joy to be in your presence and see the beauty that you have created. And so, Lord, we just want to take this time to say thank you. Thank you for all the might and the majesty, and thank you for the simplicity and the flowers and the birds. Thank you for all the things that you have given us in this world to make this a more beautiful place, a place of love, a place of joy and peace. But Lord, I also lift up those who are not here with us. There are those who, as I mentioned, are in nursing centers and hospitals, and there are those who are ill at home. There are those who are traveling. So Lord, I lift them all up to you today. Put them into your care and into your love, especially those who serve this country who are around the world, many, Lord, are still in dangerous places, and we lift them up to you also. 
And you know, Lord, that the names that we raised to you and the hands that went up represent special needs. That may be a need that only you and that one person know about, but we know that they matter. It matters to you because it matters to us. So, Lord, as we lift those things to you today, help us to, in humble adoration, bow before you, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. But, Lord, we have to be humble in your presence because we know that we are not always the servants you want us to be. There are times because we get angry or we get hurt or we get frustrated or bitter that we lash out and say things and do things that are unchristian. And there are times, Lord, that we feel that we don't have enough hours in the day to get the things done that need to be done. And sadly, spending time with you in prayer and in your word seems to suffer from that. So, Lord, let us this morning slow down in this time of worship and in these moments of prayer and let, let our souls catch up with the busyness of our bodies and let us bring the honor and the glory to you as we seek forgiveness of our sins we seek more than forgiveness we seek to be restored and nurtured and drawn closer to you that we may draw closer to those around us for all these things we ask and pray on this day of communion the day that we remember Christ our Lord in his body and his blood and it is in the memory of those things that we now join together and pray the prayer that Jesus taught each of his disciples to pray as we pray now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Scripture readings this morning, first from the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 1 through 5. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. You that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? and your labor for that which does not satisfy. Listen carefully to me, eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for He has glorified you. Continuing our readings in the New Testament, in the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 24 through 40. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me. Not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. 
Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I, for I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who has sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but rise, raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I'll rise, I will raise them up on the last day. The word of God for the children of God. Thanks be to God. We know that God has endowed each of us with the freedom of choice. And during the course of our lives, we make many decisions, some good, some bad, some wise, some unwise. And today, I want to talk with you a little bit about some of my best decisions, or what I consider my best decisions. Now, one of the best decisions that I ever made was after retiring, returning back to pulpit ministry in 2003 and then coming to Bethel in 2005. It is here that I feel loved and accepted and at peace. And I feel like I am right where God wants me to be. Another great decision in my life was marrying Sally. She and I got married. My dad, who was a huge football fan pulled me aside at the reception and said son today you won the Super Bowl and the MVP the same day because with Sally I also feel loved and accepted and at peace and I also feel like I am in my life with her where God wants me to be but probably the, the greatest decision that I ever made was accepting Christ as my Lord and my Savior, because Jesus changed my life. He forgave my sins, and Jesus, praise God, continues to forgive my sins. And I believe that one of the reasons that God put me on this earth, and I do believe that God put us all here for specific purposes, and one of the reasons that He put me here on this earth was to bring people closer to Him and to Christ. And I know that no matter what happens to me in this life, that I will be with God in the next life. So today I want to talk about making the most important decision that you will ever make in your life. I want to talk about giving your life to Christ. And I want to do so by looking at this scripture from the Gospel of John. In John, verses 1 through 15, Jesus fed the 5,000. This is scripture prior to the scripture you read this morning. In the early part of that, of that story, Jesus fed the multitude. He fed the 5,000. And the crowd was so excited 
that they followed him <clears throat> to the other side of the lake. And Jesus said, you guys are following me because I gave you free food. I can see right through you. But instead of looking for earthly bread, you should be asking for heavenly bread, heavenly guidance. Now, today, people are still looking for guidance, but they still think that Jesus is talking about food in this passage of Scripture. They say, okay, from now on, just give us the good stuff. You've got the good stuff, then give us the good stuff. And in verse 35, Jesus says, you're looking in the wrong places. You're looking in all the wrong places for all the wrong things because he said, you see, I am the good stuff. I am the bread of life. I am the one who satisfies you for all eternity. I am the one who can give you the life that will last forever. Now, in biblical times, we note that people ate bread, a lot of bread, and often twice a day because sometimes it was the only food that they could afford. Besides that, it's good because bread sustains life. It is, gives us substances that we, are, that we need in our lives. And the same thing is true with Jesus. We need him because through his body and blood, we sustain life. We put our faith in him, but the question I ask this morning is, why should we put our faith in Christ? Well, that is the question that this particular passage of Scripture answers. Why do we put our faith in Christ? First of all, we put our faith in Christ because we need Him. Every single day of our lives, we need His forgiveness. We need His righteousness. We need His grace and His love and His help. Jesus said, He who comes to me will never go hungry. He who believes in me will never be thirsty. So we need to believe and put our faith in Christ because we need Him. Secondly, we put our faith in Christ because He will never, ever turn us away. No matter what we've done, no matter where we've been or gone, how we've acted or reacted in our lives, no matter where we are in our journey, Christ is never going to turn you away. He's not going to say to you, you didn't go to Sunday school when you were a kid. You didn't go to church when you were younger. So I can't accept you. I'm sorry. No, Jesus said... All that the Father gives me shall come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will certainly not cast out. You see, we are God's gift to Jesus. And so when we come to Christ, he is going to say, I am so glad you're here. I'm glad you came back to me and your sins are forgiven. Jesus said, whoever comes to me, I will never drive away, no matter what your background is like, no matter what your past is like. I accept everyone that the Father sends to me. Jesus said, I will never stop loving you, and I will never turn you away. Jesus said, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. So we put our faith in Christ because he will never turn us away. And thirdly, we put our faith in Christ because his mission in life is to protect us and defend us. Jesus said, I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should, I should lose none of all he has given to me, but will raise them up in the last day. In other words, your salvation doesn't depend on your ability to hold on to Christ, but his ability to hold on to you. That's what salvation in its purest form is all about. You know, back in March when Sally had this quadruple bypass surgery, I know that she was apprehensive about it. I certainly know that I was. We had many discussions about this and about things. And what, what if this happens and what if that happens? Well, we talked about this, but as they were preparing to wheel her into surgery, laying there on that gurney, we had a prayer, and she looked up at me and I said, you know, you've come to some kind of a decision, haven't you, about this? And she said, let me tell you, I'm not worried because if I wake up and I see you, I know that you'll take care of me. If I wake up and I see God, then I know God will take care of me. No matter how it goes, I know that I'm in God's hands. 
and in God's care. Now later on in the Gospel of John, the writer is explaining why he wrote the Gospel and he says, Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is the Son of God, and that he by believing, and that you by believing, may have life in his name. In other words, I wrote this book so that you can start enjoying life eternally today. I wrote it so that you can have your own personal relationship with Christ and find peace and find love and find happiness. Now, I was reading on this trip um, a story that Dr. Robert Schusler wrote some years ago. And a number of years ago, the, the great motorcycle stuntman, Evil Knievel, was a guest of Dr. Robert Schuler at the Crystal Cathedral in Garden Grove, California. And as Dr. Schuler interviewed this motorcycle daredevil, Knievel said, for 68 years, I refused to give my life to Christ. He said, I didn't want anyone or anything telling me what to do or how to do it. You ever feel that way? I don't want anybody telling me what to do or how I'm going to do it. But a lot of people, he went on to say, were praying for me. One night I woke up and it's, I sensed the power of God coming over me. And right then and there, I believed in Jesus Christ and I asked God to hold me and to never let me go. And when Knievel was sharing his story, Dr. Schuster looked out over his congregation and noticed that people were sobbing. People were weeping and people were praising God. And Schuler said that he knew that this wasn't going to be an ordinary worship service. Because then uh, Knievel turned to Dr. Schuler and asked him if he would baptize him. And as Dr. Schuler baptized him, he said, if there is anyone in the congregation who needs the Lord or who wants to be baptized, then come on down to the altar. And folks, praise God for the next 30 minutes, almost 800 people came forward to be baptized and to be accepted and to accept Christ. Now, I know that many of you here today have attended church for many number of years, but maybe you've never made a public profession of faith to Christ. Maybe you've never said, I want to experience the bread of life. I want the assurance of knowing that my sins have been forgiven. I want to have a lifelong relationship with Jesus Christ. And this morning, I want to give you that opportunity. I want to give you the chance today to reach up to the one who has been reaching down to you all of your life. I want to give you the chance to invite Jesus into your life. And I'm not going to ask you to come down here by yourself. I'm not going to ask you to do that. But I am inviting you to come to Christ this morning. And as you come to the altar to take Holy Communion, as you partake in the body and the blood of Jesus Christ this morning, you can have all of your sins forgiven, completely washed away in the precious blood of Christ. And you can have a personal relationship with Christ. And you can leave here today, I promise you, with the peace and the hope and the joy in your heart that comes from knowing and accepting Christ. How do I know that? How do I believe that? Because I know what God can do. And if God can do through Christ what He did for me in my life, He can do the same or even more for you. Folks, this is the most important decision that you will ever make in your life. This is more important than buying a house or buying a car. This is more important than any other decision you'd ever make in your life. This has to do with eternity. This has to do with your precious, precious soul the thing that God has given you and wants to return to Him. Peter said, The Lord is not slow about His promise, but is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come in repentance. And so this morning, as you draw near, as you come here and join us at the altar to share with us, to share the body and the blood of Christ, to share the meal that Christ had with his disciples. The meal that he had on the last
last night of his earthly life. You too can come here this morning and have that unique relationship with Jesus. You too can come here this morning and know Christ and know that you are forgiven and know that you have eternal life. Because today, this moment, as you come to the altar, softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling you by name. He's calling for you and for me. On the portholes, He's watching and waiting. Watching for you. Watching for all of us. Oh, for the wonderful love He has promised. Promised for you and for me. Though we have sinned, He has mercy and pardon. Pardon for each of us, for everything we've ever done or said. All he's saying is, come home. Come home. You who are weary, you who are browbeaten, you who are tired of fighting this life, come home. Earnestly and tenderly, Jesus is calling today for you. O oh, sinner, come home to me. On this day, we remember Christ through the commemoration of his body and his blood. We remember that as he was preparing to go to the cross, he spent time with his disciples and dined with them. And as they reclined around the table and visited and, and shared in fellowship, Jesus quieted them and he took the bread and gave thanks to God and broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take me. This is my body. This is my body broken for you. Give it to you freely. Broken for you. Take it in this. You do this and you give it to me. And then when something is finished, Jesus again spoke with his disciples and took the cup and raised it to God and thanks and then said, Take and drink, for this is my blood. The blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this. As often as you shall drink. And so, my friends, I lift this bread and this drink to God, asking for His blessing upon these elements and upon each of us who partake of this today. May this be for us, the body and the blood of Christ. And may we honor and glorify His holy name, for it is through Him, with Him, and in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, this day and forever and more. Christ blood of God, blood the Lamb of God, blood of God is ours. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Softly and tenderly, earnestly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Jesus will continue and continue and continue to call you if Jesus loves you. So I send you forth those whom Jesus loves. No matter where you've been, what you've gone, or what you've done, Jesus is only concerned about where you're going. I send you forth to someone who he loves and cares for. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.